Hello and welcome. This time we're going to talk about still about directives and laws. Okay, so uh, last time we said, okay, if you want to sell a product in the European Union, and I guess one or two of you would like to do that, yeah, then you have to apply for the CE sign if applicable. Yeah? If there is a directive from the European Union that says you need to have a CE sign. Okay, so if a directive is necessary, is applying to your product you want to sell, you have to get the CE sign. Yeah. Now let's have a short look. What are there for directives? I, made, I mean, there are a lot of directives here, yeah, but I made some directives, put some out, uh, which I think will be most likely to, to, to hit you. Okay. So, let's have a look. Huh? One very, very, for us as a mechanical engineers, the directive on machinery. This will apply in your life. Pretty sure about this. Huh? Then, there's one for electrical equipment designed within certain voltage limit. Huh? So, this is for low level voltages and so on, not, not high voltage. So. Electrical equipment simply, usual, usual, usual electrical equipment. There's a rule for it. Yeah. There's a rule for electromagnetic compatibility. Yeah. So that our thing which we are building is not destroying Wi-Fi access. Ooh, that would be <laughs> dangerous. Then what we have here? Uh, explosive atmospheres. Potentially explosive atmospheres. Equipment and protective system intended for use in potentially explosive atmospheres. Also something which you might experience. Yeah? Then here we have personal protective equipment. This will apply for sure. Yeah? So you will have to wear personal protective equipment wherever you go. Yeah? Wherever something is manufactured, wherever is, is something produced, this will apply. Okay, so these are the these are the directives. Huh? Let's have a short look into. Let's take the machinery directive because I think this is the one which will touch the most of you. So let's have a short look on this. Huh? The directive starts some introduction word and so on. Ah, where to get these directives? Huh? Where to get these directives? There is, there is. A homepage, yeah, your legs, yeah, which is the European law homepage, and you can simply enter here directive yeah, and search. Boop, you get a list of directives. Yeah. It's if you know the number of the directive, you can enter the number of the directive. Yeah. What intended for human consumption? Mm, so drink water, drinking water directive. First hit. Uh, and you can select the directive and you see it's available in all languages yeah, which are there in the European Union. This is quite nice. Yeah? So if you would rather need read the machinery directive in German, download the German version, you have the German version. Yeah? Like I said, the directive is referred to from local law and then the local law makes the directive really law. Okay, the directive is just a directive. So now, now take a look at the directive. Let's take a look at the directive. So first there are some definitions and so on. Yeah. Also interesting, really interesting is then in Article 1, the scope. Yeah. So this directive applies to following products, machinery, interchangeable equipment, back, 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 back. Okay? Here you can see if your product might be touched by the directive. Okay? This is first. Second. Where is second? Here. Second. The following are excluded from the scope. Aha, uh -huh, there are also exclusions. For instance, here weapons. Yeah? 
weapons don't need to be safe. <laughs> because nobody needs weapons when he can't damage something with them. Huh? So, yeah. Agriculture and forest, forest detractors, mach special machinery designed for nuclear purposes, for instance, they are not touched by this. There are separate directives, of course, so this is not a lawless area. You can melt whatever atom you like. <laughs> no. no, there is a special. It's not treated within the scope of this directive. Okay. Uh, then there are definitions, of course. Here it's just written, it applies to machinery. Uh, what is machinery? Uh, there is also a definition. Machinery means this and this and this and this and this. Uh, and then it's really defined what machinery means. Uh, so this is this, then it should be clear if your product is affected by this. Uh, so now you found out it's affected. Uh, what to do? Yeah, it's also placing on the market and putting into service. This is the article which applies then what needs to be done for placing it on the market. Yeah? And there's ensure that it satisfies the relevant essential health and safety requirements set out in Annex 1. So there is not only the articles, there are also annexes. Yeah? So, Annex 1 needs to be fulfilled. We we'll have a look at it afterwards. Annex 4, yeah? Annex 7, Annex 7 here. This is describing the technical descriptions and so on, which needs to be necessary, which should come with the, with the machine. Yeah? Uh, and then you see, pa pa pa. Yeah? And last but not least, make the C marking. Yeah. And what needs to be what needs to be done process procedures for assessing the conformity of machinery. Yeah. So in the directive itself, it is described what you need to do that you are allowed to place the CE sign on your equipment, on your thing you want to produce. It is described here. The manufacturer or his authorized representative shall, in order to certify to the conformity of machinery with the provisions of this directive, apply one of the procedures for assessment of conformity described in paragraphs 2, 3 and 4. <laughs> okay, so paragraph 1 says make 2, 3 or 4. Yeah. 2. Where the machinery is not referred to in Annex 4, Annex 4 we will also have a look at this. Annex 4 is the annex where is machinery is listed, which is potentially very dangerous. Okay? There needs to be special rules of this. So if Annex 4 is not applying, yeah, if you have a standard machine, which is not potentially very dangerous, yeah, just normal dangerous, yeah, <laughs> which is not listed in Annex 4, then you can do what is an Annex 8 described. Okay? If you have in Annex, if you're listed and have a machine which is listed in Annex 4 and are following harmonized rules, harmonized standards and so on, yeah, then you can also do, then you have to do one of these three things, also do Annex 8 or type examination procedure according uh, Annex 9 yeah, and a full quality assurance provided in Annex 10. Yeah. And if the machinery is referred to as potentially very dangerous in Annex 4 and you cannot follow or you do not follow uh, harmonized laws, then it's just EC type examination, then the internal process documentation, because here this the procedures for assessment of conformity with internal checks on the manufacturer of machinery provided for in Annex 8. This is you know, you make internal checks in your company. Yeah, you say you follow these and that rules. Yeah, you make your own confirmation. 
place the CE sign. Yeah? If you are not following harmonized rules, you are not allowed to do this. Yeah? Then you have to do a little bit more sophisticated things. So, the important thing is, in the directive itself is described what you have to do that you are allowed to place the CE sign. Yeah? Sometimes, here, Article 14, notified bodies, yeah? benannte Stellen in German. Yeah? Sometimes you need to, to, to show your machinery to somebody. Yeah? to a notified body. And you notify someone, hey, this is machinery, look, this is my equipment, uh, check it. There's also written what the notified bodies are, and so on. And then, in Article 16, is even written how the C marking should be done. Yeah? That it is in, in shown in Annex 3. In Annex 3, the C sign is shown. <laughs> okay? So, this directive is really a package. Yeah? You can read it, and then you should know what to do. So let's have, for instance, a look to Annex. It must be Annex 3 somewhere. Scroll, 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 scroll. Ha! Yeah. Annex 3. This is how the C sign looks like. There's even written somewhere you can scale it, I think. You can scale it. Also, the minimum dimension may be waived for small-scale machinery, yeah? not less than 5 mm, C sign B, yeah? so that everybody can read, even without spectacles. Huh? Okay, Annex 4, here, this is the machinery which one of the processes referred to must be applied, circular source, this is the very dangerous machinery, yeah? source, <coughs> of course, yeah? dangerous, sewing machinery, blah, blah, blah. Hand fence surface planning machinery for woodworking, yeah, hoeing, uh, denoning machine, portable chainsaws, yeah, everything which is edgy and, and, and cutty and, and, and uh, yeah. No, this is the reason why it's written there. Yeah? So they need to be following especially rules. And uh, NX. Some NX7, yeah? technical file for machinery. Yeah? What needs to be to come with the machinery? Yeah? The technical file shall comprise the following a general description of the machinery, the overall drawing of the machinery, pa 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 pa. This needs to be inside the documentation. Okay? Also inside the directive. Yeah? And sometimes relevant technical documentation for partly completed machinery. It's because, you know, if you're delivering not the whole machine, but only a part of it, you also have to deliver some things. Yeah? And they are usually treated a little bit different. Yeah? Then you have to apply for assembly instructions and so on. Yeah? You have to also add those. Then, here, Annex 4. Assessment of conformity with internal checks. Yeah. So there you just give yourself the sign. Yeah. And then there is this NX9 CE type examination. Yeah. So there are different things which needs to be done for CE type uh, type examinations. And then NX10 is really then full quality assurance. Then usually you have something where it's really potentially dangerous. So this is how a directive looks like. And all directives, they look pretty similar. Yeah, they are always, yeah, I don't know. Let's open this one. What is this? Personal protective equipment. Well, why not? Yeah. Scroll down. There must be somewhere Article 1. No, no, Article 1, subject matter, general purposes, scope, the regulation applies to PPE, the regulation does not apply to PPE, buck, buck, buck. Yeah. see, the same thing, it applies to this, yeah, but with exclude of this, and then you know, aha, is it for me, is it not for me, there are also annexes, and then, pa, 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 okay, so, 
these are these are the directives and the, you see it makes a great difference if you're following even if you have a very dangerous machine which is listed in annex 4 of this machinery uh, machinery directive and you're following harmonized laws uh, you can still do it on your own uh. so harmonized laws or harmonized standards laws standards of course uh, harmonized standards uh, they are very useful uh. I will place some a file in the bottom of this of this video where you can see those those uh, directives the numbers of those directives which are right now active I do not want to put it somewhere in the video because maybe they change then I can update the file okay and I will also do a list of of maybe interesting standards for you yeah. I'm not showing the standards because they're not free of course so this is this is what needs to be done to fulfill this yeah. so there's a conformity and in the end you have the CE sign on your product that's it have a short look at annex 1 and see the first sentences there scrolly 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 again quite something Annex 1 is really long. Yeah. There are a lot of definitions. Yeah. General principles. Yeah. The manufacturer of the machinery or its authorized representative must ensure that the risk assessment. First paragraph, risk assessment. Okay. Risk assessment, this is always. There needs to be a risk assessment. And this is why we're going to talk about risk assessment yeah, in the next video. So we're going to talk about risk assessment in the next video. Uh, then we hear what is a risk. Yeah, is there a risk that I hit by a struck by lightning? <laughs> is it just a danger? What is the difference between a danger and a risk? Is there well, what is a threat? Ah, we'll see. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.